Boolean modifiers are often used to cut into shapes like so, but they can be a little bit tricky to understand. And there's a few pitfalls you can fall into if you're not careful. So this video will give you a nice introduction to the Boolean modifier and clear up some of that confusion. And if you like my style of teaching, then do check out my courses linked in the description. So to understand the Boolean modifier, let's zoom into the default cube and I will add another object and use it to cut into my cube. So shift A to add, or you can find that in the add menu up here as well, mesh, and then I'll use a cylinder. That's quite a good one as an example. I'll press G to grab and move that over to the side here. So it's overlapping my cube. And when adding a Boolean modifier, you need to think about which object you want the effect to happen to. So the cube is the object I want this cylinder to cut into. So that's going to have the Boolean modifier. I'll come down to my modifiers where the spanner is just here, add modifier and then type in Boolean and it's under generate so I can click on that. It does give me three options. Difference is the cutter one and we use that to start with. I'll just bring out the properties so you can see the names. The operand type is the thing that's doing the cutting in this case and you can actually change it to a collection which is useful and I'll talk about that in a moment but for now we're going to use an object and the object is if we use our picker I can pick the cylinder and you can see the cylinder appear there. And you can just about tell that it has done something there. It's cut into my cube, but it's a bit difficult because the cylinder is still there. So when using a Boolean modifier, it kind of looks like it's not working. That's because it keeps the original object. So if I select the cylinder, you can see that's a separate object here. And my cube, you can see it has been cut into just there, but it's difficult to see. Well, we can just hide the cylinder in the outliner and see the results there. But that's a touch awkward because if I want to make adjustments to this, I will have to unhide the cylinder, select on it, and G to grab and move it across slightly and then hide it again. So that's a touch awkward. And I'll talk about how we can fix that in just a moment. But first I'll bring back the cylinder and let's just move it to the corner again because it's a nice easy spot to see what's going on. And I'll select the cube once again and just quickly go through the other options. So there's union, which is actually making them one single object. Notice how there's a bit of flicker on here. Again, that's the problem with the cylinder, the original cylinder still being in the scene. So we've got two cylinders essentially on top of each other here. If I hide the cylinder, you can see just the cube and there we can see the join. And if I go into wireframe just quickly, so that's wireframe up the top here, you can see that it has actually made a cut to join them together as one manifold object. So manifold means watertight. This is a completely solid object like this. So I'll go back to solid mode and again and again show the original cylinder and I'll just turn on the intersect option. So the intersect is taking the area in between the two. So that sort of cutting area there. And again, I'll hide the cylinder so you can see the final results there. So I'll go back to difference and just explain how we can make it easier to work with this cylinder. So I'll bring it back, click on the cylinder. And if we go down to the object properties just here and scroll down to where it says viewport display. So this is how it's displayed in the viewport. I can go down to display as, turn this onto wire, and then we get a wireframe, which is a little bit easier to work with. And I can press G to grab and I can kind of see the results a little bit more of what I'm cutting into and how it's going to look. So it's very useful to turn on the display as wire for working with the Boolean. Now, I'll just quickly go to top view with seven on my numpad. I'll duplicate the shape with shift D and I'll make it a bit smaller and I'll keep doing that. So shift D to duplicate across here and I'll make some extra cutters. Now, if I want these all to become cutters, I can add them to a collection. So I can select on these different objects here and press M to move to new collection. Click on new collection and I'll call this cutters dash cylinders. So you know exactly what I'm talking about and create. So now when I click on the cube, I can go back to the modifiers and remember under the operator and type, I can change that to collection. The cut disappears because we haven't told Blender which collection we want. So under collection, we can pick the cutters cylinders and we've got these cuts in here. And at any point I can just hide my collection if I want to see the final result. Now you might be wanting to kind of smooth these areas out. And you might think if I right click and press shade auto smooth, that ought to smooth this out. Well, it doesn't because the cutter objects aren't smooth. So if you've got the Boolean still on your object, you will need to change the cutting objects to smooth shading to smooth this area out. Now don't follow along with me but if I do actually apply the boolean modifier just here and then right click shade auto smooth you can see that actually does work now because it's just this shape that it's taking into account because there's no boolean modifier but I'll undo all those changes and show you that if I select on my cylinders so I'll deselect all with alt a right click on my collection and select objects then right click and shade auto smooth you can see that's updated I'll just hide those cylinders and it's all nice and smooth so just be aware with the boolean modifier still on your object you have to think a bit about your cutter objects if you want to 
to smooth things out like this. Now lastly, why is it difficult to work with Booleans? Well, let's again apply the modifier. So cross to the modifiers and apply, and then select on my object, and then into edit mode. The problem we have is that we've got lots of these big n-gons. So these are big flat faces with lots of edges, and they can be tough to work with. So if I wanted to bevel all the edges to give it a nice smooth look, I could maybe use the bevel modifier. So add modifier and then bevel. And I'll just go back to object mode so you can see that. It's quite hard to see because the bevel's very small. So I'll increase the amount, but nothing's happening when I go up the amount, no matter how far I go. Well, that's because some of these vertices, if I go back to edit mode, they're on these corners where they're linked into a big end gone like this. So they clamp when they overlap. So under geometry, you can turn off the clamp overlap and you can see my bevel going all over the place there, but I'll bring that back. But you can see it's causing problems. If I do that again, in these areas just in here, if I go to object mode, it's really struggling where there's a pole like this and you can see that overlap there causing problems. I'll come down a bit and it's not too bad here, but there are still problems on these poles. I could up the segments to make it a bit smoother, but again, you start to see this overlap happening on those poles. And that's the tricky bit when you're dealing with big n-gons, if I go into edit mode, like these. You get these poles at the edges and then you can't use other modifiers very easily like the bevel. And you need a bit of extra knowledge to get there. I'll just quickly shade auto smooth again so you can see the smooth bevel. The problem is now we get these shading anomalies as well because of those n-gons. A quick fix for that just to let you know this is a normals problem and it's not treating this face as completely flat. You can go to add modifiers, type in normal and there's a weighted normal effect. If I turn that on you can see that seems to sort it out for the most part although there is a little bit of overlap in places with the bevel and that's causing problems but it does sort out those flat edges. So hopefully from that you can start to to see some of the issues you come up against with booleans. If I turn my bevel down to something like 0.01, it will probably sort that out. But again, it's a limitation of how far I can go with the bevel and it's still causing problems in some places. So hopefully that's given you an idea about how to use the boolean modifier and how to cut into your objects, but also given you an appreciation for some of the difficulties you might come up against. In later episodes of my Get Good at Blender series, playlist link in the description, I'll talk through some of the ways we can solve these types of issues. So check out that series and look out for those episodes. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.